BBOR Black Box Online Radio coming to you from West Virginia. Black Box Ned 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. And welcome to our Zodiac Killer discussion series on Richard Hoffman and all things Zodiac related. You might notice that this is listed as part two, and if you haven't heard part one yet, that's fine. You can keep listening. We're just going to be talking about Richard Hoffman and the Zodiac Killer, but I would hope at some point you'll go back and listen to part one. So I thought for this one, we could begin by reading off some of the comments that you guys have left on part one, and that one was talking more about some of the internet rumors that people were saying about Richard Hoffman, because Richard Hoffman is in um, not exactly a unique position. But he's in a different type of position than a lot of other people who become Zodiac Killer suspects in that he was a responding officer at Blue Rock Springs after the shooting of Mike Mageau and Darlene Farron on July 4th of 1969. So he's connected to the case as a policeman, as an officer, but also going on to become a Zodiac Killer suspect himself. So jumping over to some of the comments that you guys have here on part one, this is coming to us from Classic Chevy Cat Black, who says, love your podcast. Hey, thank you. About the RH initials that were written on the desk at the um, RCC, this is in Riverside we're talking about, it could have been written by a person who signed another person's initials, perhaps to get them into trouble. Those initials prove nada. If I wrote something strange, more than likely I would not sign my real name or initials. Anyway, I look forward to hearing more from you. I've been following this case since my teens. I lived in Nevada, which isn't far from Vallejo. Okay, thank you to Classic Chevy Cat Black for that one. And the RH is signed on a desktop. It's actually the desktop poem, as it's referred to, after the murder of Sherry Jo Bates in 1966. But some people believe that that RH is meant to signify a connection to Richard Hoffman. However, though, I've definitely toyed with the idea that was just read off in the comment there. What if the person who wrote that desktop poem didn't use their real initials? I mean, you're talking about using a friend's initials to get somebody into trouble. How about just using a pen name or something figurative, right-handed? I mean, something that could just have some personal meaning to the author, but not necessarily relevant to anything associated with their true identity. However, many people do look at their suspects, such as, as we said, Richard Hoffman. Also, people try and tie Robert Hansen into this based on those RH initials that are on the desktop poem, but that's a very good observation. Okay, Captain J is going to give us the next comment, and Captain J writes, the biggest problem with Richard Hoffman being the Zodiac is that he was at the hospital with Darlene at 12.38 a.m., and the Zodiac made the phone call at 12.40 a.m. The payphone was 2.2 miles away. So how does somebody be in two places at once? Well, one variant of the Richard Hoffman theory that we read off in part one is that this is some type of policeman thrill kill club, something that police officers had going on, and that there are actually multiple perpetrators in that. Do I subscribe to that theory? Absolutely not as of yet. I mean, what matters is that we get the truth in the long run, and I would accept whatever truly happened in the Zodiac Killer mystery no matter what happened. But what I can say about that is there is that one theory that does say that, okay, the reason why there's so many kind of odd things going on with Richard Hoffman and how he goes on to become a Zodiac Killer suspect himself is Other people were in on it. And a lot of people go down the pathway that somebody committed the murders and the killer didn't necessarily make the phone calls. But that's a very difficult thing to prove. Okay, so um, our next one comes to us from the Haunted Library, who says, as far as an officer riding with the victim to the hospital, I'm pretty sure that was common in those days. Certainly not a reason to throw suspicion at this officer for that alone. I don't think there's anything weird about that. Absolutely not. But um, if we want to get into some of the weirder territory, I was talking a lot about the Internet rumors yesterday because I would hope that everybody would admit that when you're looking at some of these Zodiac killer suspects, not only Richard Hoffman, but when you're looking at Zodiac killer suspects in general, there are a lot of things that are said about them on the Internet that are based on rumors. It's like such and such said this, such and such said that this is what happened. And people aren't saying necessarily where they got their information from. And also, as somebody pointed out, um, somebody actually whose name is Tom Voigt, I should say, I guess we can address him by name. As he pointed out, someone was claiming in a post that Richard Hoffman enunciates the word car the same way the Zodiac killer did. And, And he's just like, 
Well, how, how do you know that if you haven't heard the Zodiac's phone calls? So as you see, there are rumors that are going around on the internet. To talk about these, we're going to go over to Reggie's card collection, who says, let's talk about non-rumors. Officer Richard Hoffman arrived in plain clothes with an unmarked police car. He was responsible for policing Lover's Lane's locations. He responded to the radio transmission at 12.10 a.m. Since he was the first officer to arrive, he obviously wasn't too far from the location. Fifteen minutes prior to the radio transmission, he told the radio dispatcher that the parking lot of Blue Rock Springs was clear, which puts him at the murder scene around the time of the murder. He was born in 1938, so he would have been 30 years old during the murder, which fits the Zodiac age description. He was there when Darlene was announced dead. A few minutes later, a call was made from a payphone. And as we said, that's only two minutes later when she's pronounced dead. That's at 1238 a.m. When, when they actually made the pronouncing of her death. It's 12 at 38, and then the call is made at 1240. And they, the caller described the murder location like a police officer. The Zodiac parked behind the car and approached Mike Majot and Darlene Farron like a police officer, which was the reason why Mike Majot started pulling out his identification. The Zodiac shined the light in the vehicle like a police officer. If these don't raise a red flag for someone looking into Officer Richard Hoffman, I don't know what does. I may not be a fisherman, but I know when something smells fishy. All right, so big thank you there to Reggie's Card Collection for the uh, comment. And a lot of people are going down the pathway that they believe that the Zodiac killer um, either had some familiarity with law enforcement. And I mean, I guess we should say that should be the, for the first one or secondarily, the Zodiac was a member of law enforcement himself. I don't necessarily think that we have enough material to say that there's the, a type of policeman thrill kill club going on, but they're looking at the way that these crimes were committed or the way that the letters were constructed and the ciphers and the phone calls and some of these things, as he said here about shining the light into the car, I mean, I definitely think that that raises suspicion of a policeman, if everything that Mike Legeau has said is uh, somewhat truthful. But, um, I mean, do you think that there's anything suspicious about Richard Hoffman arriving in plain clothes? Um, I'm not overly, overly caught off guard by that. I think that it's much more about the behaviors of people rather than what they're wearing and, um, no, that, that doesn't stand out to me to be, um, based on that fact alone, that doesn't set, seem fishy to me, but um, it might have significance later on, always leaving the door open, but uh, definitely thank you for the, um, thank you for the comment there. Now, there's, an, there's another thing that I would like to do in this one, and that's not only to uh, go through some comments that you guys have, we'll do more of those in the Q&A, mind you, and at this time, I would also like to say that we're going to be doing some things like a monthly AMA, which is an Ask Me Anything, where you can drop any types of questions that you have that you would like discussed. Zodiac killers, serial killers, true crime is mostly what we do on this channel, but any subject is fair game. We're doing a monthly Zodiac killer Q&A session, which has happened for November already, but we'll do another one in December. And then we'll also just do an Ask Me Anything, where any subject is fair game. So drop in any questions or comments that you would like um, discussed here on the channel, and hopefully we will use them in the AMA coming up. And if you want to follow along with these things, you can hit that like button and subscribe. Best way to help out the channel, as well as listening to some more content. Now I'm going to go on to a different website here, because let's talk about Richard Hoffman and some possible connections to the Zodiac ciphers. And I'm on Science Blog, which, and this is a post that was written by an individual named Klaus Schmey. S-C-H-M-E-H. -E and um, I was really quite surprised that I got on this website. I, I Science blog, I'd never really heard of it before. And it sent me this huge German message. And I just clicked the Akzeptieren. And I was like, I have no idea what I'm reading. But I, I think this means accept. So it uh, sent me here. Nothing bad happened to any of my devices. But um, anyway, they have some discussions about the Zodiac Killer ciphers. And let's go on to the 340 because they're talking about um, a History Channel episode that says that they have um, possibly solved the 340. And I'll just read off that little bit here. The fifth and last episode of the History Channel's documentary, The Hunt for the Zodiac Killer, has aired, and it is titled The Code is Cracked. This is the last part of the series promised to reveal the solution to the world's, fam world's most famous crypto mystery, The Zodiac's 340. And it actually says The Zodiac's Z340, excuse me. But... Um, 
okay, I can tell you flat out, I have not seen any of those History Channel uh, shows. Maybe we can do some responses to them in the future. We've talked about uh, some things. Like, I guess you'd say perhaps I watched uh, like a small segment of one when we were doing like the Ross Sullivan and Lawrence Kane stuff, but I haven't followed those. So I haven't seen this episode. But what they do present is a possible solution to the 340 cipher. Here it is. Kill both, night and day. I live by the gun barrel aim, so quit wishing for game to be over. Um, I-G-I-S, uh, over rigs, uh, over rig is, my wrist locks, question mark, now angry, dangerous, I won't change any of my gum, and get, I'm sure that's game, but it's spelled G-A-M, I won't change any of my game. Okay, that's what they want to say, that's what Klaus has written out here, that is the beginning, and the next line is... Richard M. Nixon. But um, there's some things, and you can see this in the graphic if you have it in front of you. And it says, Richard is spelled R-I-C-H-E-R-D. M, for uh, Milhouse, actually, Richard Milhouse Nixon. And Nixon is spelled N-I-K-S-O-N. Now, you might be looking at the title to this episode, and you'll see that there is another name from somebody named Richard, and that is what? Richard Hoffman. So, why would the perpetrator or the person writing this cryptogram change the spelling of Richard Nixon? Okay, if that is indeed the solution, and we're just um, looking at that possibility, why would they do that? Well, how many letters are normally in Nixon? I mean, it would be normally spelled N-I-X-O-N, right? N-I-X-O-N, that's five. But this has been changed to N-I-K-S-O-N. So, Richard Nixon now has six letters in his name. Who who else is named Richard and has six letters in his name? Richard Hoffman, H-O-F-F-M-A-N. Is that supposed to be a clue? Or if you could simply look at the fact that the name Richard is found in the 340, if their solution is correct. And there's a big thing that I can say about that in just a second, but what do you make of that? Do um, you think that we're looking for a perpetrator named Richard? Think about all the suspicious things that we said about Richard in part one. Is this any clue into um, who the Zodiac Killer was? And I mean, I mean, in the past, we were always looking for somebody named Robert, right? At the final line of the 408 cipher, Robert Emmett the Hippie. And we do have an upload about that here on this channel, if anybody would like to check that out. It's called uh, Zodiac Killer Robert Emmett, if anyone would like to uh, visit that upload, an invitation to you all. But the thing to say about this one is, um, I think that that's a little bit of a stretch. And as I was reading up on some other things, about Richard Hoffman and some connections to the ciphers. Almost all of them, I should say, are really centered on somebody named Richard. Because one of the things that I had never really thought twice about was, in the 408 cipher, the one that has been decoded to everybody's satisfaction, I like killing people because it's so much fun, that one, that the cipher symbol that was representing the letter D was the circle with the cross going through it, the quote-unquote zodiac symbol. Now, Richard, of course, begins with R, but how does Richard, um, what's the short form? Dick. And um, so it's like, are, are we looking for somebody who has a first initial with the letter D? And I read that on some website. I would cite it if I could, um, if I had it in front of me. But um, thank you to the person who came up with that idea. And I do mean that in all sincerity. Is that a particular clue? Because a lot of people think that there is a genuine message that is contained in the Zodiac Killer ciphers. I mean, I get comments from you guys all the time saying thanks to the contrary. Somebody even wrote in a comment once saying, the first cipher was cracked, the 408, minus the line of uncoded text at the bottom. But the, the, they're saying the 408 was cracked, and the Z13, the Z32, and the Z340 have been through supercomputers. They've been through all kinds of examinations. People have also had 50 years 51 years, more or less, as we um, approach the mailing of the 340. Actually, it's just passed. And they're like, people do not have a definitive answer to what is contained in these cryptograms. And some people are just saying that they are meaningless. They don't have any extra meaning. They're just, it's a mystery that's meant to never truly be solved. And on the other hand, a different response is that there is probably a meaning in there. If someone is going to go to the work of creating these cryptograms, Oh, they're going to have a meaning in it, but it's going to be something that is so twisted and so far out that you will never get it. And I will tell you flat out, I can provide you 
a new solution to the 340 cipher that I've never mentioned on this channel before. I almost thought about not even saying it. it was like, is this really something I should do? But we will do that in a future episode. And if you would like to hear more about that, just let me know in the comments section. I mean, I think that I can, um, well, I think I can crack the 340 cipher, but um, a lot of people say that they can. So that's going to have to be a whole separate upload all on itself. But look out for that on Black Box Online Radio. And as all, as I said previously, you can like and subscribe to follow along with these things here. But um, do, we, do we have any significance of looking for a person with Richard and six letters in the last name if the name Richard in this example is also misspelled R-I-C-H-E-R-D? Is this just the Zodiac Killer being the Zodiac Killer and many words are misspelled and it leaves people constantly guessing? I'm not 100% sure, but... um. When we're looking at somebody like Richard Hoffman, I definitely think that there are certain people that um, are that people are examining for um, a variety of reasons. And when it comes to him, it's almost just like, are we going to be going through every single officer who has been involved with this? Because bear in mind, Hal Snook, whom we've talked about a lot on this channel, was someone who showed up at Lake Berryessa. And there are also possible things going on with Les Lundblad from Lake Herman Road. And very precisely, that deals with some possible allegations around Les Lundblad Jr., his son. But when we look at Richard Hoffman, being age 30, that is definitely within the time frame that people are looking for. Most people think that the Zodiac Killer, if you're entertaining a single perpetrator, was around 25 to 40 years old at the times of the murders. And they definitely believe that this was heavily calculated. Now, would Richard Hoffman have had the mathematical understandings to have this thing created? I mean, if you're doing that policeman thrill kill club thing, absolutely, you're going to be in touch with somebody who has the understanding to create this type of mathematical signature. I mean, there are hidden mathematical clues in the Zodiac Killer mystery. I would hope that we would all expect that that would happen. But, um, somebody like Richard Hoffman, is that really going to be going down his alley? I mean, anybody can compose cryptograms, but there does appear to be a certain sense of mathematical sophistication going on in the Zodiac Killer mystery. And I should also address one point that I think is um, almost goes without saying, but there have been some aged composite progressions or um, like composite sketches of the Zodiac Killer that are based on possible aged progressions. And I have to tell you, after looking at Richard Hoffman in the documentary, This is the Zodiac Speaking, it really does seem like he is someone who definitely matches that if that's what they're basing things on. But but we don't necessarily know. And um, I would like to just sit, share one thing from ZodiacKillerFacts.com that talks about... Um, the Hoffman Report, as we said, after Blue Rock Springs. And um, this is just something that's going to challenge the Zodiac hoax theory. In the first two Zodiac letters, the writer provided information regarding the first two crimes. According to Zodiac hoax theorist Thomas Horan, a San Francisco Chronicle reporter and the author of the Zodiac letters must have had a copy of the police report written by Vallejo police officer Richard Hoffman. Okay, now, does that mean that he wouldn't have needed a police report to get that information because Richard Hoffman was indeed the Zodiac Killer himself? I mean, that would definitely challenge the hoax theory, whatever information would be in there, but um, I, I don't necessarily know if I... um. I guess we can just say it right now. I mean, I don't want to make you guys just wait for everything in new episodes. I mean, what he's talking about is that there's somebody who drove out of Blue Rock Springs Park. I believe his name was Andy Nicolatus Jr. And he left slowly and quietly. He was stopped by the police later on and questioned. And it turned out he had um, nothing to do. He had just driven into the park. He had seen that something had been going on. So then he drove out slowly and quietly. And that was mentioned in the report. And then the Zodiac goes on to say, oh, um, by the way, I didn't leave the way the newspaper said that I left with screeching tires and the engine blaring, I actually left slowly and quietly. So then Thomas Horn went down the pathway that thinking that, okay, the person writing these letters had to have had access to that police report and knew information that the real killer couldn't have known. Well, I mean, this is, um, we're talking about Richard Hoffman as a Zodiac killer suspect now. Maybe he's the person who wrote the report himself. And um, he was the person who was actually there. And um, all of these things coming together at once. Now, that is a little bit um, beyond belief, but I just wanted to talk that talk about that because we're talking about the Richard Hoffman theory as well as um, I mean, I don't even necessarily think that that's 100% necessary to have a copy of a police report to say, actually, I left quietly. But um, I mean, you, you would have a 50-50 chance of just guessing and getting right. And um, 
I mean, like that's that, that, that's. I think that that's all we really have to say about that one there. But um, we can talk about that. That we could do an entire upload just on that one sentence right there that we have just uh, read off. But what would you like to say though about uh, Richard Hoffman as a Zodiac killer suspect? And as you see, this is listed as part two. We're going to be talking more about him on the channel. This is not going to be the end of the series. So please follow along with these things and. Look out for that future upload where we attempt to crack the 340 cipher here on this channel, Black Box Online Radio. And that'll be all for me now. So I will see you guys on Instagram for the bonus podcast. Oh, and uh, one last thing, though. Please drop your questions for the AMA in the comment section below, and we will try to get to them this month. Okay, until next time.